Whoa! You are my kind of people. Let's see, I had a chance to talk to a few of you earlier. Oh, oh yeah, there's <laughs> Jeremiah sitting over here. He's got a great business. He's putting a digital approach to automation into an industry that's never had it. Get a chance, you might want to talk to him. Um, let's see, oh, and Alice, is she here? Yeah, that she is right there. Alice is changing the way people handle financial planning. And she will work with anybody to tell them how to do that as long as they're in the industry. And she's doing pretty well from what I can ascertain. And then Jim, I don't see Jim. Anyway, Jim is a consultant. And what he's doing is changing the way businesses operate by showing them how to get to what works faster. All of you are entrepreneurs or want to be. Each of you is looking for a better way to make things happen. Some of you are here because of, what are they calling it these days? Job displacement. Others are simply looking for a formula. Now, the problem is, you're probably uncomfortable speaking up for yourself. It's not easy to do. That little voice that sits somewhere back here on your shoulder keeps saying, who are you kidding? Trying to find the answer. When you can't get that social media stuff to work for you, is making some of you climb the walls. As I've gone along, I keep track of what works in networking. I've been speaking as a networking ninja since about 1993. If you, like me, are inclined to say there's a better way to do things, and you're tired of those elevator speeches going down in flames, <laughs> let's try a different way. Okay? First off, 30 second marketing, what is it? First, when you meet someone and they ask the question, what do you do? You want to get their attention. You want to find a way to get some idea planted in their mind. The next thing you want to do is keep their interest because they may be a client. Remember, you're just trying to forge a connection at this point. You want to make your point about what it is that you do and how you do it. And if possible, how you do it differently than someone else in the business. And you want to get agreement on something. Usually, it's for another meeting or a chance to sit down and talk or whatever. That's 30 second marketing. If you take nothing else home with you today, take these words. It's a conversation, not a commercial. I'll say that again. It's a conversation, not a commercial. So what you really want to do is hook them. Hold them. Pitch them. And close them. Now, when I first wrote those words down and started talking about this, my wife said, you can't say that. I said, why not? She said, it's so rough, it's so crass, it's so beat them up. And I said, how is she going to remember it? And after a while, she relented. She said, you're right. Book them, hold them, pitch them and close them is an easy way to remember what we're talking about. It's a conversation. That's what you want to do. But in order to hook them, you have to find a hook. What's a hook? Have you ever had a musical phrase go through your mind and you couldn't get it out? Try to speak crazy. Happens all the time. That's a hook. Normally when I'm introduced, somebody says I'm the networking ninja. That's why I send you an introduction to be read. <laughs> I've been speaking as a networking ninja now for 18 years, all across this country and a large chunk of South America. In any case, that is a hook. I've used it everywhere. When do you use a hook? Anytime you're meeting someone, I don't care where it is. It could be a presentation. It could be somebody you meet at a bus stop. I don't care. You use it every time when you introduce yourself because every time someone asks you, 
But what do you do? That's your opportunity. I love this one. They call me Captain Crunch. A CPA. It works. The best one I've ever heard in terms of stopping power. The lady that came in early, I was chatting with, as I was setting up and getting ready to go. And I said to her, I said, so what is it you do? And she looked at me and she said, I traffic in human flesh. <laughs> I said, oh, really? <laughs> she said, I knew what we were going to be talking about today, so I wanted to you know, try that out on you and see what you thought. And I said, so what is it you really do? And she says, I'm an attorney. And I'm an adoption attorney. Hmm. I said, do you use that all the time? She said, no. <laughs> but it really works well at cocktail parties. <laughs> so I said, would you mind doing that when we're in you know, the whole groups here? She said, no, no, not at all. You could have heard a pin drop. I mean, it was, it was just it shut things down. And then she went on to explain that she was an adoption attorney. Two people came up to her afterwards and said, we've been looking to adopt. Could you help us? You never know where business is going to come from. But if you have a hook, they'll remember you and they'll come looking for you. She was standing along with us with Jan. You noticed who said There's a cheat sheet here, your hook. You know how, what we do is. Okay, so Jan. Okay, so I'm the mistake preventer. You know how hard it is to make sure you're hiring the right person for your job? We add process and data to your hiring practices to add more certainty to your decisions. You were a hand. Yeah. Thank you. Since you were second on your feet. Okay, I got part way there. Here's what I've got. I saved careers. You know how difficult it is to get someone back on track once their performance has slipped? Well, we've done that 500 times in the last few years. Can we talk? <laughs> <laughs> Give them a hand. group of IT value specialists. Mm -hmm. You know the feeling about being held hostage by your IT guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> we can help you by giving you a real CIO on a part-time basis. Now, part of what goes on here is the need to have some way for people to remember you. This is one of my favorite stories, and even though I'm asked to tell it on three continents, I still like telling it. So here goes. I was working with a company in Chicago, <coughs> and we're in a board meeting, and the president just casually announced, well, I'm going to tell everybody at the, uh, the company meeting today, in the, in the cafeteria, that, that uh, they can all pick out their own titles who won the cards. <coughs> and, and around the table, it's like, what? I'm sitting there, are you, are you kidding me? You've got to be nuts. No way, right? He said, I'm going to do it. Okay. So we go down to the cafeteria. He steps up to the mic and taps it, which most people do when they do that, and said, hi, I'm going to let everybody know that today I'm going to let you pick your own titles for all your own cards. And I thought you'd like to know that. And right down here, sitting just a little bit ahead of where Marcus is, is a gal named Margie. And she starts bouncing her seat. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. He's like, uh, yeah, Margie, what is it? She says, I know, I know, I know. He says, what? What do you know? He said, I know what I want my title to be. <laughs> he said, really? What do you want it to be? And she said, Galactic Commander. <laughs> <laughs> you could see the lump rising in his <laughs> But he held firm and he said, you got it. Margie got her cards. And on her cards, it said, Galactic Commander. Oh, now, you have to understand, Margie worked in the customer service department. She could not sell anything unless it solved the customer problem. In the first month, her sales were up a little under 20%. The second month, it was over 20%. Third month, she was somewhere between 24 and 28%. I can't remember the percentage. Her activities made people stop and look at what it was she was doing. 
It wasn't the sales that were important. Because what they found out from their database was that these were people who had never been called on by a salesperson, who had never received anything from the company, who were calling her to solve a problem they had even though they weren't using their products or services. Now think about that. It takes some kind of moxie to get that kind of title, but then to deal with that kind of situation <laughs> is amazing. Okay? Now, as a consequence, about a year later, there were three galactic commanders. <laughs> <laughs>